Markets yeah, sure. like to break out and then they like to retrace back to what we call the scene of the crime, right? Where the breakout point was. Hello everyone, today our guest is Gareth Soloway. In this video, Gareth Soloway talks about the stock market and its future. If you enjoy this highlight videos, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you. The British pound dropped to a record low on Monday against the US dollar, falling 4% at one point to an all-time low of $1.382. The pound has since come off its worst levels on speculation that the Bank of England may have to raise rates more aggressively to tamp down inflation. The Federal Reserve's aggressive hiking campaign, coupled with the UK's tax cuts announced last week, has caused the US dollar to surge. The euro hit the lowest versus the dollar since 2002. A surge in greenback can hurt the profits of US multinationals and also wreak havoc on global trade with so much of it transacted in dollars. Such US dollar strength has historically led to some kind of financial slash economic crisis, wrote Morgan Stanley's Michael Wilson, chief US equity strategist, in a note. If there was ever a time to be on the lookout for something to break, this would be it. Bond yields leaped on Monday, with the 10-year Treasury yield topping 3.9% at one point during the day. That marks its highest level since 2010. The yield also jumped on the two-year Treasury, which is especially sensitive toward Fed policy. The rate on the note surpassed 4.3%, the highest level since 2007. One book that I read um, last year was by, I'm sure you know who he is, Robert Prechter, the analyst Robert Prechter, who I think is a fantastic analyst. And Robert Prechter, he believes this is not any ordinary bear market. This is going to last many years. I believe you just said this a few minutes ago. You, you just said this as well you know, recently. He said it's going to last many years because this is the bear market that's going to essentially make a correction to a, to a bull market that started at the beginning of the last century, the beginning of the 20th century. So in other words, the secular bull market finished in January of this year. And now we're starting a secular long term bear market. If, in case anyone is standing up, maybe you want to sit down. And if you're drinking, put your, put your drink down. Because Robert Prechter believes is an 80, we're going to have an 80% or 90% drop on the stock market over the next several years, not not one year, several years in this decade. I want to know what you think. Are you as bearish as he is? How bearish are you? Do you think this is more of a medium term no over the last couple of years? Or are you much more bearish, similar to Robert Prechter in a depressionary, a depressionary bear market? Yeah, so what I'm thinking is I think the high on the NASDAQ 100, hot, potentially the S&P 500, we will not take those out for over 10 years. I do think wow. that's the case. And I think it might even be reminiscent of, of the dot-com where NASDAQ did not take out the high. I think it was almost 15 years before it took out those highs. And I think there's a couple things that concern me, right? And I, I could see why he could be correct on this, is that number one is you have to keep an eye on the 100-year cycle. Right. They, there's yeah. always some things people will tell you this. And I've heard this many times is that every generation needs to experience a Great Depression. Uh, well, we're coming up to the 100 year cycle of the Great Depression later this decade. Um, think about that. You might say, well, 100 year cycle. What's that? Well, think about the Spanish flu and COVID 100 year yeah. cycle. Right. So and then also, if you just look at the charts, I mean, what's remarkable about this and why I think people have to be so careful thinking that any low is a significant low where it's going to go back to all time highs is that I mean, you're looking at the chart, if you, and, and I don't know if you mind, do you mind if I show my chart again? Yeah, yeah, please go ahead, please. Yeah. Uh, so if you look at, this is the S&P 500, right? Look at yeah. the move we've had since the Fed started printing money. I mean, it, this right. was a bull market here in the late 90s. This was a bull into 2000, and, and, it, and this, this makes those look like tiny little peas, right? I mean, same thing with the NASDAQ 100, is even if you compare, and this is kind of scary too, is the vertical nature of the dot com is almost like the vertical nature since COVID on the chart, except this one is so much bigger than the dot coms even. I mean, amazing. So I yeah. do think that there's, I mean, to me, if, if you're asking me in the next, I mean, again, it's hard to know if it's the next two years or in the next seven years or whenever, but if I had to guess where this market will bottom out, 
I'm going to go out on a limb and I say, I think that you're looking at, you're going back, you have to go back and reach, retest the pre, the previous level. So something yeah. in trading that I found to be very, very accurate is that markets yeah, sure. like to break out and then they like to retrace back to what we call the scene of the crime, right? Where the breakout point was. And, and the problem is we never did this with the cycle high, like on the S and P 500, when you broke out, you just kept going. I mean, except for I mean, COVID, little little dip here, but there's a need for a market or a stock to retrace back to that level. So if I had to guess, I think that's where we're going back to. I don't know the time frame. Timing is so so hard, um, but I do think that's where we're going to go back to. Yeah, it's an interesting. It's a probability that I think, as you were saying uh, with Gareth, there's a probability we've entered the bear market. But I'm also open-minded in a sense that. I could be wrong and maybe the markets can at some point prove us wrong if they break above resistance. We'll talk about it in a different session. You're, but um, you're right. I mean, honestly, and I yeah. think that's so important is that, you know, you could have all the signals in the world pointing to something and we don't know. We don't know for sure. You don't know what can ultimately happen. So so I think I think you're 100 percent right is that you basically all we can do is trade what we see and then that can change yeah. on a daily basis. And, and a good trader can quickly pivot. Traders that don't pivot, they're the ones that end up losing out. It's all about that pivot. Grantham, Mayo, and Van Otterloo in a letter to clients says that the dollar's at its highest valuation versus other major developed currencies in more than 35 years. And it's our problem. The report, written by GMO partner Ben Inker, uses a bank for international settlements index, measuring the dollar's real effective exchange rate, in other words, adjusted for inflation. Unfortunately for the U.S., an overvalued currency is a negative influence on the performance of equities in that country, and today's combination of cheaper stocks and cheaper currencies outside the U.S. seems a promising backdrop for a reversal of the U.S. equity dominance of the last decade, Inker writes. If you enjoy this highlight videos, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.